revived a long simmering debate across parts of the so-called British realm, a debate about whether it's time to cut ties with the crown. The realm, made up of 14 countries plus the UK, all of these countries symbolically at least hold the British monarch as the head of state, more important even than their own elected officials. That includes Australia, it includes Canada, also the Bahamas. Ramey Innocencio is in London for us, and he's going to walk us through which countries are consider considering deposing the royals. Ramey, good morning. Good morning. Queen Elizabeth's death has cracked open the gates of criticism of the crown. As for those countries in question, they're all former British colonies with tragic histories of slavery. From Australia to the Bahamas. Cannons boomed across the Commonwealth as thousands of miles away, Charles was proclaimed King, head of the Commonwealth, defender of the faith. But parts of the realm are restless. Jamaica's prime minister told Prince William to his face the country would be moving on from the monarchy with a referendum expected by 2025. Apology, no reparations, no. Protesters had also demanded an apology and reparations for Britain's role in the slave trade. What is the biggest scar on Jamaica because of the United Kingdom? I mean, the whole idea of Jamaica is the scar, right? Kai Hindi Andrews is the UK's first professor of black studies. The Royal African Company, which was founded by the monarch, was the one company that enslaved more Africans than any other company in the entire world. I mean, the monarchy cannot be separated uh, from slavery at all. But countries can separate themselves from the monarchy. From the darkest days of our past and the appalling atrocity of slavery, which forever stains our history, like the tiny West Indies island of Barbados last November, when then Prince Charles congratulated one of the realms on breaking away and becoming the world's newest republic. A new president inaugurated, replacing then Queen Elizabeth as head of state. As a descendant of slaves, I'm aware of, of a very difficult and troubled history. Wesley Kerr is a royal historian and points out the British Empire is long gone. But to survive, the British monarchy needs to mix tradition and modernity. Fewer people think that there will be a monarchy in the next hundred years. What do you say to that? I get to count the millions of people out on the streets this week. I'm going to count the millions of people at the Jubilee. So I see no sign of, of the monarchy being in trouble, but it's got to prove itself to every generation. A recent poll in the UK found support for the monarchy slipped 13 points in the past 10 years, with youth support dropping the most, from nearly two out of three to one out of three. The monarchy has lost its relevance. People are really suffering financially at the moment and suddenly we have 11 days of non-movement because of tradition. Do you think King Charles could ever be as loved and admired as Queen Elizabeth? No. No. Without a doubt. No. What would you say to a critic who says the UK does not need the monarchy anymore? Oh, I would completely disagree because it brings tourists in and we welcome people and we want people to come and see our history. And publicly, King Charles says he supports any realm country becoming a republic if they want. Gail? Got it, Ramey. He raises a lot of interesting questions. As much loved and revered as the Queen was, is, was and is, there are still some people that say there need to be some changes. It'll right. be interesting yeah. to see what King Charles does, if anything. It seems likely that there will be more realms that will detach and become independent, but it seems unlikely that the UK is going to do away with what is a huge branding yeah. bonanza. There is a lot of tourism involved yes. in, in visiting the royal residences. Absolutely yeah. true. Okay.